So the big question is this, what does a love me as I am really mean? Today, I explore the fine line between self-acceptance and toxicity. My name is Juno Wosu and welcome to the Second Chances Podcast, a love journey in black and white. So today I'm delving into a topic that is both delicate and quite profound, the love me as I am mindset. You see, while self-acceptance is crucial, there's a thin line between embracing who you are and excusing toxic behavior under the guise of this philosophy. In healthy relationships, accepting each other is key. It's fundamental. You need to accept each other. But what happens when this acceptance is used to justify harmful or narcissistic tendencies? When does love me as I am become an excuse for refusing to acknowledge, to take responsibility, and change toxic behaviors? So let's start by maybe defining some of this toxic behavior. This shows up in different ways and it can range from constantly disrespecting your partner or trying to manipulate them or even a a lack of empathy when situations arise. And it could be, it can even stretch to the point of abuse. And this can be physical, emotional, mental, different types of abuse. Narcissistic tendencies often involve this grandiose sense of self-importance and a lack of regard for other people's feelings. So we really, really need to pay very close attention to this love me as I am mindset. Because as much as it sounds great, this philosophy has been around for a very long time. If you love me, you'll accept me the way I am. We got to be very careful because it can become very problematic when it's now used as a a weapon to avoid taking responsibility, to avoid addressing behaviors that are impacting the relationship, right? So again, it's one thing to ask for acceptance for your uniqueness, let's just call it that, or maybe some things about you that are not so amazing. But yeah, see, if there are minor things that your partner can overlook, then that's fine. But it's an entirely different request or expectation when this is outright disrespectful and the patterns are pretty harmful to maybe even to you, but definitely to your partner and other people around you. So in this type of situation where, and you know, I'm not plain saint here. I do have um, times where my trauma, oh, I get triggers and then some of my toxic behaviors do show up. And David is more of a patient person when it comes to resolving conflict than I am. And when we're through that whole bout of whatever it is that's going on, whatever toxicity I've brought to the table, we will always have a conversation to try to figure out where did that come from? Because self-awareness is so, so key for you to be able to catch yourself. And if you can't catch yourself at that moment, then hopefully you have a partner that can help you catch yourself and really reflect on what went wrong and why that behavior cannot be tolerated in the relationship, right? Because you don't want a a relationship dynamics where one partner feels constantly manipulated, constantly invalidated, constantly emotionally drained, where now they're just scared of of triggering you. So they're they're not being themselves. They're not being free. They're walking on eggshells because they don't want to upset you. Because again, we don't know what the blow up is going to be. So it's essential to recognize the difference between unhealthy patterns and behavior and calling out bad behaviors and toxic behaviors when it's impacting a relationship. So what do you do if you're in such a relationship? If you find yourself, so I've already talked about if you're the one who thinks, oh, love me as I am, very narcissistic tendencies right there. And it could enable a lot of toxic behavior. It could be coming from a lot of your your unhealed trauma that you haven't dealt with and baggage from whatever experiences that you've been through. So you need to, you need to catch yourself and work on that. 
But if you're on the receiving side of this mindset, then it's important that you're able to set boundaries. You're able to communicate with your partner, maybe not in the heat of the moment, but at some point in time where everybody's calm about what is acceptable and what is not going to be acceptable in this relationship. And be firm, hold on to it, hold them accountable so that they know if they're ruining this relationship, it's on them. It's not a case of going and crying and saying, oh, but if you love me, you'd have to accept me the way I am. No, if this behavior is affecting you and is ruining the relationship, then you need to put boundaries in place and hold them to it, hold them to those standards and not accept or tolerate or enable them. Because sometimes we can become enablers of this, uh, this, this patterns, this type of behaviors. So it's important to take time. So both ways to see if you're of that mindset, the love me as I am mindset, right? Dig deep within yourself and be honest with yourself. Are there, are there parts of you, are there behaviors or patterns that you, sh- that show up within you that you know are detrimental to a relationship and can be very, very hurtful? Because sometimes in the moment you don't even know, you. sometimes you don't even care. You know it's hurtful, but you don't even care. So think about your past relationships or maybe you're getting to know someone now, maybe you're, you're dating. Think about situations where you get triggered and you you start acting out. How are you hurting yourself and your partner? And what are some of the things that you can learn from that behavior and start changing them? Because you need to evolve, right? You need to know better to do better. So this is a journey of getting better, improving, but it starts with self-awareness and understanding the impact or the effect of your behaviors. And again, remember, you also, so you look at the side of, do I have that mindset, the love me as I am, or do I enable other people who are the love me as I am, so that you're a people pleaser, you put other people's needs before yours, you're too afraid to confront these behaviors and to speak up, even though it's hurting you. Relationships are about mutual respect, about mutual growth, and mutual understanding. Loving someone doesn't mean turning a blind eye to toxicity, no. You shining a light on that is helping them change for the better. You show love by helping them to grow. But if they don't want to grow, then there's nothing you can do about it. You've played your own part. But also make sure that you're not one of that same mindset, the love me as I am. So as we move forward on this journey and we learn more about ourselves, we do a lot of self-discovery, a lot of self-introspection, be open to changing. First of all, acknowledge and accept where you are. But then take the necessary steps to start changing so that you can grow, so you can be the best version of yourself for a partner. Thank you for listening to the Second Chances podcast, A Love Journey in Black and White. Until next time, sending you love and light.